This is the new iPhone 15 Pro, which is one of the most popular devices, but around 90% of people don't fully customize it. These easy shortcuts make life a lot easier, from quickly writing notes, asking ChatGPT, to opening the camera or turning on the flashlight. And by setting interactive widgets, a cool contact poster, and even your own live wallpaper, you can transform this iPhone into a cooler device. So stick around guys because I've got 15 awesome ways to fully customize your new iPhone just the way you like it. First, I've got to tell you about this new cool action button. By default, when you press and hold this button, it switches between silent and ring mode right away. So if you go into your phone setting, then find actions button, right there you get to decide what you want this button to do when you press and hold it. If you're into taking quick peeks, you can set it up to open your camera or you can even choose selfie mode or regular photo mode. Now when you press and hold that action button, you're all set to capture your favorite moments super fast. You can set it up with shortcuts to do a bunch of cool stuff, like calling your favorite person, identifying the song that's playing, or writing down notes for your ideas or to-dos. Now here's what I did. I use it for quick chats with ChatGPT. In the shortcuts, I pick the ChatGPT app, create a shortcut, and then link it to my action button. So whenever I need answers, I just press and hold that action button and ChatGPT is right there to chat with me. If you want to have more extra button like this, let's talk about the side button. Okay, so the next cool thing I do is use that side button for two major things, Siri and Apple Pay. For Siri, I go to setting and find Siri and search. In there, I set up how I want to talk to Siri. You can choose to say, hey Siri or Siri to activate it, or you can simply long press the button on the right side and Siri will be ready to help. For Apple Pay, just double click the side button and Apple Pay will appear. But if that double click for Apple Pay isn't working yet, find Wallet and Apple Pay and then make sure the double click side button option is turned on. Hold on, there is more hidden buttons you should customize. This cool feature lets you use the Apple logo on the back of your iPhone as two extra buttons. Here's how to set it up. Open your setting, tap on accessibility, scroll all the way down to find back tap. Now you gotta choose what happens when you double tap or triple tap on your iPhone. For me, I would go with double tap to open the camera and triple tap for turning on the flashlight. It's like having extra shortcuts. So cool. Now let's talk about customizing the home screen. Thanks to the new interactive widgets in iOS 17, you can do all sorts of things without even opening the app. I'm a big fan of adding the reminder widget because it allows me to check off tasks directly from my home screen. And as for the Apple Music widget, it's so useful for pausing music without even opening the app. Also, if you add a contact widget and toggle on the buttons, you can text or call anyone right from the widget no matter which app you're using. Another cool update is for the photo widget. You can tap on edit widget and choose which album you want to display on your home screen. And here's a cool iOS tip. If you make a mistake while customizing your home screen, just give your phone a little shake and you can easily undo your changes. Now you can set a live photo as your wallpaper by tapping on the photo and choosing a live wallpaper from here. Just make sure this icon here is turned on. That way it'll automatically play in a slow motion whenever you unlock your phone. And you can set custom fonts and colors for the time display right here. You can set more than one lock screen and switch them depending on your mood. Plus, we've got a brand new set of wallpapers here and when you choose this, every time you unlock or lock your iPhone, you'll get this cool animation. Now let's customize the lock screen. First, do a long press on the lock screen, tap on customize, now remove any widgets you don't use and add the ones you use the most like weather, battery, and calendar. And you can always tap that plus button and pick a new lock screen. You can get creative by adding new widgets, changing the style, and even playing around with fonts. Also guys, you can decide if you want the lock screen to display wallpaper and widgets or none of those. So head to settings, then display and brightness, scroll down to always on display, 
Now you get to decide how you want it to work. Now let's talk about the new standby mode in iPhone. It'll only activate when your phone is charging and resting horizontally on its side. You can pick from different clock styles and widgets right there. And if you tap and hold on any widget, you can customize it even further. You can choose widgets like the reminder and keep checking things off. And if you want more widgets, just tap the plus icon and select your favorites. Now, if you're like me and love having a photo clock, just swipe left. If you tap and hold, then hit the plus button. You can choose any photo album to use for your new clock. And if you swipe left again, you'll find even more clock styles by swiping up. You can customize them by clicking and holding, choosing different colors and styles. Next up, when you call someone, your custom contact picture appears on their phone if they allow it. To edit yours, open the contacts app, tap on your name, tap on edit. You can choose to use photos, emojis, or monogram. I would go for a background photo that I like and play with the size and style. By sliding, you can change the styles and effects of your image. If you tap on your name, you can pick different fonts and colors and have fun with your name's appearance. To make it all work, go to contact photo and poster and turn on name and photo sharing and enjoy! Guys, I like to keep things clutter free on a new device. So for the next step, I'm gonna keep only the shortcuts I need in the control center and remove down one in ones. Here's what I do. I go to setting then control center and from there I remove any controls I don't need and add the ones I actually use in my daily routine. Now you can mute yourself during a call by just tapping your AirPods once or twice. To set it up, go to settings when your AirPods are connected and choose if you want to mute with a single or double press. On the iPhone 15 Pro, by tapping that button repeatedly, you can switch between different lenses that offer various zoom levels. Plus, you can long press on it to smoothly zoom in and out. And now when you take a portrait shot, you can edit it later. You can change it into a regular image or adjust how strong the portrait effect is. You can even change the area that is in focus. And remember, in the settings under camera, there are lots of options you can customize. For example, if you turn on the camera level, you'll see a line here that helps you keep your shots straight. It's just all about making your photography experience even better. Another important thing I always do on my device is to display battery percentage. If I want to be really efficient with my battery and have my iPhone automatically switch to power saving mode when the battery goes below a certain level, I use the shortcuts app. I create a new automation and look for battery level. I set it up like this. When the battery level drops below 20%, you can pick any percentage you prefer. And I choose after confirmation. And then I search for low and select low power. So when my battery level goes below 20%, it automatically switches to low power mode. The next thing I do on my new iPhone is to improve my workflow in Safari. I create different profiles in Safari for work, personal life, and study. So in setting, I go to Safari, then I tap on new profile and I give each profile a different name and choose related icons. Now while I'm browsing in Safari, I can tap here to switch to different profiles like work, personal or study. It's really helping me keep my tabs organized. In simple terms, you can have different profiles and within each profile, you can have different tab groups. When you're in a tab, you can swipe to go to the next tabs, and when you zoom out, you can swipe to move between different tab groups. It's a really organized way to manage your web browser. Here are some more quick customizations I like to do. Sometimes when you're unsure about answering a phone call, you can let it go to voicemail. With the new iOS update, you can see a live transcript of the voicemail in real time. And if it's an emergency, you can answer it right away. To use this feature, go to settings, 
than phone and toggle on live voicemail. In messages, I also prefer to rearrange the icons in the plus button based on my preferences. So I go to settings, then messages, iMessage app, and toggle off the ones I don't want to appear when I tap the plus button. Also, I prefer to turn off autocorrect and other features I don't want in the keyboard. So you can do this by going to settings, under general and keyboard. The last thing I prefer to do on my new iPhone is ensure my personal information is ensured with people, apps or devices I don't want it to be shared with. So I go to settings, then privacy security, I scroll down to safety check and tap on it. Inside I find manage sharing and access it's just like a three-step review process. You can review and customize who can access your info, which apps can access to your stuff, and the devices linked to your Apple ID. It gives you a complete control over your personal info. Guys, I recommend doing these three steps right when you get your new iPhone to ensure your personal information stays safe and secure. So if you guys got more cool tips, share them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe me because I've got more cool tech tips coming your way. See you soon.